Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week it's Tillamook Bay Spring Chinook and Rife Lake Landlocked Coho Salmon. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. We're on the northern Oregon coast at Tillamook Bay searching for the elusive Spring Chinook Salmon. Our guide is Big Dave, who's fishing with Steve Lynch of Procure and Owen Hayes of Outdoor GPS. All right, we're getting started here. Fishing for some springers, late season springers. Uh, my last couple fish have been on this Spinfish 3.0. So we're gonna put one on right now. So I'm gonna stuff this Spinfish with some tuna and some herring that I've cured up. So I'm just gonna get a little bit, a little bit there. Okay, these are so simple. You just open them up. There we go. Put a little tuna in there. Maybe one more little piece. Here, I'm gonna shove this herring in the top. Okay, and then don't forget your bloody tuna. Shot in there. Oop. There it goes. And just stick them together. All right. Perfect. There it is. There you go. They've been working. Let's go try them. Oh. <laughs> One of my favorite places to be when we were young was right here. Right there. Floating a bobber off the bank before we owned boats. <laughs> and we would get we'd get fish pretty often just floating eggs oddly enough with Phil's cure back in the day all right guys we're here in Tillamook Bay today in Tillamook Oregon we're kind of in the uh, upper end of the bay and we're gonna start here we got an outgoing tide right now we got a couple hours of this outgoing so we're gonna slip down here and get in a good area see if we can catch some slipping through um, then we'll probably go down to the bottom of the bay and we'll work that tide back up to here So we'll see what happens and what we find on this outgo But I'm feeling pretty good about the incoming tide today that, that incoming and the and just as the outgo starts That's when we've been getting them. So we're gonna run a couple spinners and a spin fish um, Gonna get a little scent on here a little more bloody tuna try to keep it off the blade Just get it on the hooks running a little hoochie skirt on this blade Right. Kind of depends on here day to day how these tides are, but you know, we get a lot of weeds in this bay, so sometimes you can kind of follow a line where they'll form in one line and you can kind of get to the side of them. But uh, we do get some weeds in here. Oh, there's a seal right there. There's fish in here. Get ready. Yeah, sometimes you know when I'm out here, it's like you don't want to see the seals because they run the fish around, but then you know if there's a seal there, there's some fish around. How deep are you? Seven, five. This current's gonna get real weird here now. Just let them get back there. It's gonna get deeper in just a second. There's a couple big ones in there, but there's some weeds in there too. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna, we got this one preloaded, our spin fish. We're gonna put some salmon slammer in here, and this has a little garlic. I know this is one of Owen's hot ones up there on the Willamette. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try some down here. I do, I, I run a lot of the bloody tuna down here, but we're gonna give this a run and see if they want a little garlic flavor today. It just seems like warmer water for whatever reason. Yep. And it, down here, I've never really used it down here much, but because the water's always colder, you know? We're at 58 today. Well, that's not cold. Yeah, and yeah. we'll probably see it warm up a little more when this tide comes in, I bet, too. We broke 60 the week before last on the Willamette, and that's, you know, it hasn't been a great bite, but it seems like all the bites that we've been getting have had something along those lines in there, either salmon slammer or the bloody tuna garlic, right. garlic bloody tuna. Well, we got a little problem here. We got a bunch of fish, but the weeds are just so bad right now that I'm gonna move spots and see if we can get out of these weeds a little bit. And we'll come check back on here, in the, on these ones here in a little bit. We'll see if this water cleans up. All right. So, tide's still going out. I'm gonna go up a little bit and see if I can get on the other side of these weed lines. A lot of times at the end of your, the end of your low tide, you'll get in some nice clean water, which we're still oh, about an hour and a half away from that. So work it up and then we'll work it back down. Well, 
Welcome back to a calm, gray Tillamook Bay. We're after Spring Chinook with Big Dave, Steve Lynch, and Owen Hayes. Golden red salmon are dead. We have fish in the water, but also too many weeds to fish effectively. It's time for a change. All right, guys, we've been beating it up in here, and there's some fish around. We're seeing a few, but I think I'm going to run down to the bottom now, and we'll get the top of that tide, and then we'll work our way back up, try to follow these fish up, try to find some fish that are just coming out of the ocean. Probably maybe we get out on the jetty, look for some fresh biters. But obviously, there's a little bait out here. Look at all these birds. We got pelicans. And they're going nuts, so we better take a little peek here. Let's see how our water looks, but not bad. I was going to go to the end and come back up through it, but we better take a little look in here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I getting this stuff too. I'm just going to leave it in here, okay? Do what you do, bro. Leave it here. Well, guys, that was called the sleeping bite. Yeah, well, I highly geez. recommend it. It's a great he technique. Was sleeping. And I forgot to have his clicker on and I looked over and that rod was just going to Kept town. Taking it off. Going to town. Alright. Right behind the boat. Okay. Coming at you or what? I'm just hanging out. Right. Just coming with. Okay, here comes the net. I'm shutting you down. Here That's you go. A big head shake. Woo! No breakaway, no breakaway. A lot of pressure. Okay, guys. Well, I guess what do we got to do? Oh, we got to take a nap and yeah. just let you your stuff you bang around on the bottom and yeah. do whatever. Rod right between your legs. Just oh, oh, okay. high, high on the rod. Yeah. Stay real high on it for me. Nice chromer. Right? Yep. Take two. Say no fin, Steve. No fin? Say no fin. Oh, it's a hatchery. Oh. Sea lice all over it. Keeper. What did he eat? What did, what did he eat? He ate, the, he ate the stinking spin fish again. He ate the old stinking spin fish again. Nice. All right. Well, we got a lot bigger ones in here, but we'll take him, huh? Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, boy. As Lord, we're gonna... Matt, please have some more. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The first one and the last one, right, Owen? <laughs> Two toughest ones to get. That's right. Woo! All right. It does not need to be repacked. It's still full of bait. I'm just going to recharge it with some salmon slammer. So when we got down here, you know, we saw a lot of birds flying around eating bait. We kind of dropped in. I was marking fish right there too. And we kind of kind of disappeared for a minute and we got right down on this bottom end. The water cleared up, started marking them again and it wasn't long and we had fish on. So let's drop them back in guys and see if we can do it again. I hope you've enjoyed our time down at Tillamook Bay chasing unicorns, otherwise known as Spring Chinook. A fantastic fish where even one fish in the boat is worth the effort. Now up next we're going to go to Rife Lake to fish for landlocked coho salmon. But first, here's Big Dave with his take on how he sets up his rigging for the Yakima Bay spin fish. The weather's changed on us a little bit. We've got some pretty good chop in the bottom. Not as bad up here. So we're gonna give it another shot. Sticking with the spin fish. Got my 360 flasher. This is the uh, 3.0. Um, and the, you know they also make the 4.0. Um, I like the smaller ones. I do a little bit better on these in the spring. Now with the fall fish, the larger size is good too, um, for sure. Running about a 32 inch leader right now. It's a little bit longer, you know, than a lot of guys are running. Um, I find that, you know, when I hook them up on this, I don't lose very many fish. Um, you know, the shorter, the shorter leader, you will get a few more bites it seems. Um, but I don't lose too many on this longer leader and it seems to work real well. An impoundment of the Cowlitz River in western Washington, Rife Lake is long and deep with lots of sport fish species. Today we're with Jerry Henderson and John Kaiser of Salt Patrol. 
the main target here today is coho. So there's resident landlocked silvers in here. They get pretty good size. And there's rainbow trout. I think there's even tiger muskie in here, so, but we're not doing that. <laughs> At 23 miles long and up to 360 feet deep, there's plenty of lake to explore to find fish concentrations. Okay, so we just launched at Mossy Rock and we're on Rife Lake. So it's a really deep lake and we're gonna be targeting uh, coho today. So there's landlocked coho in here. I'm uh, gonna troll some spinners and squids and uh, see how that works out. And to kind of figure it out, you kind of, you know, we came and kind of did a pre-fish a couple weeks ago and the fish were kind of out towards the middle for us, for the bigger ones. And then down towards the other dam, at the other end, there's quite a few down in that area too. So we'll see where we end up today, but I got a feeling we'll, we'll pick up a few fish. So we keep our corn in here, just a cooler. Uh, I bring three different kinds for this kind of stuff. So I got regular bloody tuna and shrimp shrimps dyed red so sometimes I like the red one sometimes I just like the plain one just just depends so give it a we try a little everything see what they bite on okay we're gonna start out with a sling blade this morning uh, this one's just green chrome and then uh, we've got a Yakima bait kokanee rig it's got a spin and glow in front of it a little green squid we're gonna put some corn on it so I like to put uh, a couple on the top one everybody's just a little different there we go, and I'll stick one on the bottom. And this is just plain corn here. All right. Get that back there. Okay, I'm going to start with the uh, white corn with the uh, bloody tuna. And I have a uh, Yakima bait, a little hoochie. And I'm going to start out with a couple of pieces of corn on each hook. And we're gonna see if that don't get them. The little, uh, it's a little spin glow above the, uh, above the hoochie. A couple of pieces of corn on each hook. And we're gonna go back about between 60 and 100 feet behind the boat. And then we're gonna work on a depth to see what, what's gonna happen today. It's usually somewhere in the 20 foot range, up to 30 feet. Okay, so this rod, we're gonna run out the back. So I've just got a spinning rod here. It's got some 12 pound braid on it. Comes down and then we go ahead and got a slider, a couple of beads above it and below it. Just add a little weight, give it a little bit of, uh, you know, drop it down a little bit. And then a sling blade and then a Yakima bait silver magic. So with the one piece of corn on it. And we're gonna set that out behind a little bit, see what it does. So this lake is deep. So right now we're in 238 feet of water. Even up on the beach, it's 120 feet. So these fish are feeding in the top part of the water column. Everything we've caught has been less than 40 feet. So that's kind of where all the, the uh, stuff they're eating, bugs and everything's gonna be up here. So they tend to be towards the surface. So anywhere from down 12 feet on the downrigger down to 25 seems to be really productive. Don't think about kokanee co. <laughs> We might even go faster. We were up like one nine, almost two, a couple times to get uh, get them to go. They were uh, it, go. It seemed like a little faster. In the morning, last time we were up, we started a uh, little bit deeper and uh, fishing real slow. Did well, and then they went off the bite, and we uh, kind of had to look for them. Sped up and shallowed up, and seemed to turn the bite back on. I'm going to check that one out. Cause... A little tiny one. Oh, it wasn't small ones, yeah. Not the ripping bite we had on the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> yep, slow coho. We're gonna let that one go. We're looking for pound one pounders. That's what we're looking for. That's what <laughs> we had. That's what we had last time. Something so. bigger than that one. Yeah, something a little bigger than that. Ones that actually, you'll know when they're on because they start taking line. Yes. Oop. That one? I don't even know. So yeah, the corn, I mix it up. I, I use the uh, Procure uh, Corn Magic first 
and then once it drains you know and it it, it takes all the uh the liquid out of the corn i'll go ahead and dump that out and then i'll go ahead and put my scent in so the bloody tuna we put in the tuna oil uh you know the water soluble one and then one of them we put in the corn magic and one we got shrimp in it so I'll kind of mix them up and it seems to work pretty good for coconut and for these so. Welcome back to Rife Lake. I'm Justin Wolf. When fishing a large lake like Rife for a schooling fish like a coho salmon, finding the fish is definitely one of the first keys to fishing success. So here's a traditional sonar here. So we're 243 feet. This is zero to bottom. Down here, we're looking at scanning behind the boat. So we've marked a couple fish here. This is actually looking down uh, about 90 feet and about 70 feet behind the boat. I can see anything that comes in the pattern here. It's, it's actually Transistor is actually aimed backwards, so works pretty good for live sight. Oop, there's one right there. Yep. This is kind of where we were getting them last time, too. Right? Yeah. This, uh, this one here, by looking at your rod, looks like it's a little bit bigger than that last one. You didn't like that one? <laughs> All right, that's a small one, not but that's huge, one. Not huge, but he's bigger than the last one. So, a limit of fish is five fish per person, so. It's also a two rod lake, so you can fish two rods if you have an endorsement. Um, so it's kind of fun. It's different down here. I, you know why salmon fishermen like it is because when we're out in the ocean, you know, we're doing the downriggers thing. It's the same thing. We're just downsizing. So our rods are lighter, our gear is smaller, um, but we're doing the same thing. We're fishing downriggers, we're following, we're looking at the sonar, we're seeing where the, the, the fish are at, and we're adjusting our depth accordingly. So if you notice, I sped up. We went over those fish. I sped up a little bit, slowed down, and that got one of them to hit there. So. All right. You like a bigger one? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm like one of the little ones. It feels bigger than the last one we had, though. Oh, yeah. Hey. That's a little better one. It's getting a little bigger. Hey, maybe the orange is getting it done. It was only in water, what? Five minutes, something like that. Fish on, so. Yep, got one on here. Bites on. This one I just put a squid insert on just to see if they were eat something smaller, but I think they just, I don't think it was that. It's the lure. I think it's just that they just came on the bite finally, so. All right, Jerry, you're going to have to do the flip them in the bag again. Ready? There you go. Perfect. Uh, the meat is just like a coho salmon in, in the ocean. It's a, a nice, bright, uh, reddish meat. And uh, I fillet them out and eat them just, just cook them just like you would the uh, coho in the ocean yep seemed like uh the didn't like the shrimp so we went back to the procure shrimp and the dyed uh the red kokanee dye egg dye and that was uh worked pretty good so give it another shot here see what happens i'll bring them right to you that's a little bigger Oh, oh, no, no, <laughs> a little too soon, Jerry. <laughs> no, that's a good one. Get him in there. There you go. <laughs> I tried to get him in the air there, but I missed. <laughs> oh, that's a little better. Oh, yeah. Still not quite the one pound size that we're looking for. But maybe they're down here. Could be down this end. It's a big lake, man. And they can move around. So. I am not an expert on Rife Lake. <laughs> I prefer the salt water, but 
with the way things are in Washington State now, you take what you can get. So you're going to take whatever opportunity you can get, and this is an opportunity. It's fun. You're out here, you know, deep water trolling. Size your gear down accordingly. Just have a good time about it. So we'll get the corn on here. And go for another one. Oh, that one was uh, 23 feet. And we're putting the gear set back on at about 50, 55 feet behind the boat because the water's pretty clear here. So, and then uh, drop down. And, you know, that one kind of whacked it pretty good. All right. Oh, that's a good one there, Jerry. That's one of the ones we're looking for. That's a little bigger. That's kind of what you see down here. That's a nice big coho. Sure. That's kind of the more of the size we've been looking for. Real, real nice, healthy fish. I mean, you can look at the girth there. Size, you know, barely fits in my hand. That one buried the rod down really well. well maybe we'll get, maybe they're biting now. We'll go get a few more. Yeah. You know what? Maybe that purple one. Oh, he's still there. Oh, come on. Good eater. I like. I really like it when they come up and you can see their mouth like that. It just opens it up. No doubt it's a coho. Big white mouth. There you go. That's a nicer one. That's a good one. Good. Nice healthy fish. And you can take them home, Justin. <laughs> we're, we both have freezers. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.